both Compressor Pro and Analyzer Pro are using the same approach to group processing as the Equalizer Pro. Each group stands for a separate process. So with each new group, you basically add another equalizer, compressor or analyzer. As we will be listening to surround files, here is the quick setup check again. Left front speaker, right front speaker, center speaker, left surround, right surround. If you are not watching the HD version, please download it from our website and play it back on a surround capable player like the free VLC player. The examples will also work in stereo of course, but you will hear a down mix of the surround signal. Actually, the visualization of the surround compression process is so easy to understand that it will be no problem to understand the basic functionality of the surround features. Of course, this approach is very convenient when it comes to multi-channel audio formats, but the Compressor Pro also works great with stereo signals. We will listen to a live recording of Guido Mancusi's Pro Meitu Fanfare, recently recorded in the Synchron stage in Vienna. Let's listen to the dry mix without any reverberation or processing. Watch the different levels of the surround channels, always visible in the input meter. Right now, they show exactly the same levels as the output meters. Let's start with the group settings. To keep it simple, we will use just one bus for both channel pairs, front and rear, and we will leave center and LFE speakers assigned to separate groups. So for now, these two channels will not be compressed at all. Threshold, ratio, attack and release settings are the classic compressor controls which are explained in detail in the video tutorials of our classic Vienna Suite. Just like in the original Vienna Suite compressor, FAT activates a process that makes a signal sound thicker, similar to tape compression. And the Opto mode provides an optical release simulation, resulting in a more breathing sound. The waveform data display gives you a great overview of the compression process, with the input, output and sidechain graph, along with the applied attenuation. You can activate and deactivate each graph as you like. Remember, right now we are only applying compression to group 1, our channel pairs in the front and in the rear. Now if we'd like to add less compression to the rear channels, but with mid and side processing enabled, we'd use separate groups for the left and right rear channels and activate the MS button for this channel pair. The Compressor Pro settings will now be entirely separated for these MS channels. To copy and paste the compressor settings from our front speaker pair, simply use the context menu in the data display, available with a right click. And don't forget to change those settings. Adding some compression on the center speaker will not hurt either. By the way, if no group is assigned to a channel, it will not be processed. So now we have one Compressor Pro plugin taking care of multiple channels, on multiple buses. The sidechain section brings in another factor. 
it lets you decide which input channel is used to calculate the gain curve that is applied to the signal of the selected bus. In other words, to shape the controlling signal of the compressor. To avoid confusion, all settings in the sidechain only affect the controls of the Compressor Pro, not the signal itself. For our front stereo pair, the sidechain signals could be only the left and right signal for group 1. Or we could use the rear channels as sidechain input. Or just the center channel. Press solo to hear your sidechain signals exclusively. In any case, you can see that the highest levels of the selected sidechain inputs are displayed in the data display when you start playback. Another option is to apply low cut, high cut, and high shell filters to shape your signal for each bus. Additionally, you can also use an external sidechain signal to shape the controlling signal for a particular group, or combine all available sidechain inputs. You see, there are many options. In the end, it always depends on what you want to achieve with your mix. The gain slider lets you adjust the output gain. In surround situations, it can be a bit tricky to use the makeup gain, as it might result in an unnatural sound. Again, this depends a lot on the source material, but you might get shifted volume levels in your surround setup. Of course, the makeup gain will work great in a stereo setup. This takes us to the analyzer. The beauty of the grouping feature comes into play as the wow factor. We will listen to another 5.1 surround file, recorded in the synchron stage in Vienna again. And now you decide which groups you want to see displayed, again with the corresponding group colors. We can assign each input channel to a separate group. And you can easily zoom into the display. A right click with your mouse will reset the zoom. Of course, there's lots of options to fine-tune the settings of the analog mode. Precision, the pitch reference, the display style, the feature I like best is that you can switch on the note mode so that the loudest frequency is shown in the frequency display for each displayed group. Spectral weighting lets you choose between filter types A, B and C, which simulate different human hearing curves. Spectral weighting and spectral slope are best explained in your Vienna Suite program. Hold holds the peak of all frequency bands. Fall off sets the fall off behavior of the graphs. Attack defines the attack time of the analyzer and release sets the release time. If you prefer a digital mode, the settings will change accordingly. You can change FFT window size and overlap. Larger window sizes will give more accurate readings for base frequencies, but will make the update rate of the analyzer slower. A higher overlap will help to increase the upgrade. 